Hello and welcome to another video on Microsoft Fabric. And in today's video, we are going to discuss one of the questions which you have asked on the YouTube channel on my Microsoft Fabric videos. So what happened in the past, I have posted the videos, videos where I've taken the data from a local file and posted it to Lakehouse. And I've taken a data from a database and I posted it to Warehouse. Now you have asked a question, can we take a table from a warehouse and post it on the Lakehouse? So basically what I need to do is I need to take a data from a table and this is going to be, uh, I'm using pandas. So it's going to become a pandas data frame and I need to put that into a lake house. So how I'm going to do that. So now again, to do that, we need to go to the fabric and finalize a lake house where we wanted to move it. So let me jump onto the uh, Microsoft fabric on Microsoft fabric. I already opened app dot power bi dot com now on the app dot power bi dot com i will click on workspaces and choose one of my workspace and the workspace which i'm going to choose is going to be zero one fabric once i click on zero one fabric i need to scroll little bit down and I'll find lake 02. I have few lake houses. I'm going to choose lake 02 and I'm going to click on lake 02 here and I'm going to click on the lake house explorer. So once I click on the lake 02, the lake house explorer will open and here I have tables and files and I'm right now interested in file section. In the file section, I have already created a subfolder sample. So this subfolder is created by using a right click and using the subfolder. It is not created by my code, which I'm going to run in Python. So here I am already loading some files and those of who has watched my last videos, my, you might've seen how I loaded these files. Now to load these files, I need a Azure token. Now there is right now, there is no mechanism where we generate the fabric token. So the token will be generated for your login or in case you are using service principle for that, the token will be generated from Azure. So you will generate an Azure authentication um, token and that's the same token we are going to use in our code. Now, those of you who has watched the previous video, can skip that step if you already have the token generated and those who have not for that I'm adding the part how to generate the token uh, after this and you can generate the token and then you can use. So now let's generate the token. To get the token you have to go to portal.azure.com make sure you have a login there you already created an account there if not ask your admin to give the access. Now, once you have done that on portal.azure.com, you have to go for app registrations. If you don't get that, you can search for app registration. Once you click on app registration, you need to start registration of a new app. And in this one, you need to give a name. You can keep it account in any organizational directory or and personal. This is what you can keep. And then you register with the default parameters rest of the things just keep default. I have already done a app registration, which is fabric.microsoft.com. Now, when I do the app registration, I get few things and please note down these things. I need this application ID. I need this directory and tenant ID. Then display name is fabric.microsoft.com. Now, not only I need this, but I also need certificates and secrets. So here you have to go and add a new secret, give it a name and add a secret and you would be needing this secret ID. Once you got the secret ID, just note it down. So you already noted uh, the two things there and you have noted now the secret also. Now, you have to go to the app permissions and some of the permissions are really important here, which you supposed to give. And one of the important permission is Azure storage and the other permissions are power BI service and Microsoft graph. But most important one is Azure service user impersonate. You might require a service user. 
I'll just tell you how you get it. If you click open on that, you will, if you open this, you have a Azure storage third in the down and that is what you need. So you have to click on this and you will get that added here into your permissions and then you have to come and click on the grant admin consent for your company. Once you are done with that, you are ready to go. Okay. So I have done with all these settings and once I've done, this is the token, which I can use, but to use this token, I need to generate a token. And for that, I need to write down a Python code to generate a token. So my application with the help of application ID, directory ID and secret has to generate a token. And I'm going to tell you that code in the Python. So now we have done setup to get the token. Now we need to write down the Python code where we are going to get this token and use that token to put the file on Microsoft fabric lake house. So let's jump onto the VS code. Now I'm going to show you the VS code, visual studio code code where I have actually have one code. Now what I've done is I've done a little bit modification to this code. This is not the actual code, which I'm going to run. I have the code near to it, which I'm going to run, uh, which is DB to PY. That's the code, which I'm going to run. But right now I'm going to explain it here. I have just done, I've hidden few things here like passwords and all those, but I'll tell you what are the portions in my code. So one first portion in my code is this portion, which is basically uh, the import portion. The second portion, which I have is this get access token. Now the third one is I have a code for put file, but I'm using the same code in the patch file also. So I have a patch file in the patch file. What I'm doing is basically this, this does a lot of work. So what happens, it gets the data from the first, from the local uh, machine from the local SQL server. Then it creates a file on the uh, lake house and then it go to put that file onto the lake house. There are parameters which is going to decide. And then finally we move the data. So uh, we say re request dot patch and request dot patch is one which is going to put the data. And then there are a couple more uh, procedures here, which is for the checking the keys, which I'm generating. So basically token generation is successful or not. Finally, the code, which I'm calling is the get access token. And on Azure, you have already got the application ID because we have created application there. Client secret you have got director ID, directory ID, you have got username and password. This could be service username, password, or this could be your own username and password. In my case, I'm using my own username and password, which I'm also using for Azure as well as app.powerbi.com. You will get an access token because of that. And the same access token you can use in the patch file, put file is optional, but I'm going to give you both the code uh, so that you can test it out. Now, let me explain you what this function is doing. See get access token is the most important function. So, so the get access token, what we are doing is we are passing this function application ID, client secret, directory ID, username and password. Now I'm assigning it to new variable app ID, client secret, directory ID, and this is token URL. Please note down this login.microsoft.com slash directory ID. I'm appending the directory ID here. O oath two and token. Okay. So we are talking about O or two and token. Now the token data JSON, which you are creating, and that's why we have import JSON here. So grant type is password. Client ID is app ID. Client secret is client secret. Storage.azure.com is my resource and scope is graph.microsoft.com uh, and user ID and password. I'm assigning to it and post that. This is my token data and this is my token header where application type X XML form URL encoded. That's what I'm taking in the token header. Now I'm printing the token URL here. Uh, it's not necessary. It, if you don't want, you can just comment that out. Then you have token uh, response request dot post. That's when you post this request dot post, then you will get the token response. And from the token response dot text, JSON dot load token response dot text, you are going to get the JSON dot response dot DICT. And if you see later from token dot response dot DICT dot get, you are getting the access token here. If you see, this is the code for getting access token. So these are the statement. Please remember these are the statements, which is working out. And then there are some error handling steps. So these steps are going to give us the token. Now we will 
call this procedure we'll get a token now using that token we need to move the data to the lake house to move the data to the lake house first i need to get a data from a local source so let me explain you the uh, the code which i am having in the patch file and this is the procedure which i'm going to use primarily so in this procedure what i'm doing i'm using sql acme to first of all um, get the data so server basically the local host and double slash here because there is one slash so i have given double slash to make sure i get one slash and sql express i'm using sql server express edition on my local machine where i have loaded this data database is sales and this is the connection string which i'm creating ms sql is the uh, microsoft sql server po pyodbc is the driver server is the url which i've created here database is the database driver is sql server that's what we are going to use for local sql server sql server express edition and trusted connection type equal to yes because we don't want login i'm using windows authentication and then you can say then important thing next important thing is to create an engine and that is where i'm creating the engine so you got a connection string now you're creating an engine and in engine you pass that connection string the next statement is i simply selecting the entire data i'm creating a select statement which is a text right now select star from dbo sales as simple as that then i create a pandas data frame where i'm reading this one and i'm saying pd.readsql and i get the data using the engine using the sql query and the engine i am getting my data and that's i got the data into the data frame i print few lines of the data frame and then is the main code where i construct my url so first of all this is the put request which i'm going to say request dot put request which is going to put an empty file this is what i'm going to do so for that i need this token url now this url the, till this place it uh, you will be able to get it from the fabric i'll tell you how to get it so you go back to the fabric and you go to this sample uh, folder and you right click here and say properties so this url you will get it here copy this and come back to your vs code and you paste it here so you can see this code and this code till this place you already got it after that files and sample also you got it so you will get this one so you don't have any problem to get this okay now the next thing which you have to do here is basically so after sample you have to write down the file name comma resource equals to file this is the first one when you put it okay this is not the patch code then you have to create the uh, so this is token url you have to also create token headers and token headers you will create authorization bearer space access token and access token is something which we'll get before it and going to pass it so this we are going to pass in header then again file name this is you can give it here i have already given it here now i'm printing that it's creating the file in the lake house now then i have response request dot put token url which i have generated data is empty right now headers equals to token header so that's what is happening i got the header and this print is response i am printing the response now this is empty file creation now i want to put the file so the the only difference happens in the url now these are the few important things in the url post this one uh, look the code after the question mark that's most important position equal to 0 because i am inserting from the start action equal to append means you need to append and flush equals to true all these three things should be there so i struggled with the code when actually i have not put action equal to append and flush equal to true in one go and that's where i uh, corrected that and i got the code now again we need to uh, create the token headers which is authorization bearer space access token file name and content length is zero and then i'm printing the token and then i'm saying pushing the file to the data lake now the content now this is the importance too now if you remember we got a data frame pandas data frame i am just converting it into file content is kind of a string where i am saying df dot csv index equals to false so i am saying index equal to false and then you give me the csv and then simply i am writing down here response equals to request dot patch token url file data is equal to file content headers equal to token headers and then i am putting this file into my lake house so this is the code which is going to push the data into the lake house so i have explained you the code now this is some error handling code and finally we are calling the access token using the app application id client secret directory id username and password we pass this access token to the patch file that is the most important out here and that's going to insert the data so now time has come that i execute this code and show you that the file is going to load 
Now this file because I have modified, I'm going to provide it to you. I will go to the other tab where this file data is there with the actual usernames and password. And I'm going to comment this. And let me run to run this code. I will go to the run, which is on the top menu here. I have the run. Those of you who did not notice it. That's on the top run, run without debugging and the code has started running. And it has completed. Now it has completed quickly. So let's go ahead and test it out whether we got the file or not. So let I have opened this one folder and let me say refresh. And you can see sales db one dot CSV file. This is the file we have pushed. Okay. Now what we can um, do is we can scroll a little bit and check it out. As you can see, we have 19,000 rows. I have around 30,000 rows. And you can see there are 30, thousand one rows one is header so 30,000 rows I got it so I'm able to load the data and you can see the data has been loaded pretty quickly so we are able to move a file now I have not created a file I've taken from database into the pandas data frame in the memory I converted it into CSV and I've done it now remember this is a small file only 30,000 rows 1 MB of data but if there is a larger file, we need a little bit of planning. Like, do we need to send in multiple parts? Then if we send into the multiple part, where should we start the, uh, um, the file to append it and all those, all those things are something which you can try out. So why don't you go ahead and try this code out and do let me know what else you want me to consider in this particular series. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.